We try to study the TV copies, what those look like. We try to coach the receivers. We try to break down OPI into two different categories. Um, you know, receivers on DBs coming back towards the line of scrimmage, which would be push-offs, receivers, DBs going away from the line of scrimmage, how those are getting called, the frequency at which those are getting called. Um, and then also the, the second element to the offensive pass interference would be those picks, those rubs, you know, a guy coming in, making contact or shielding an opponent from then covering another receiver. Um, it, it, we're trying to understand the best that we can, how, how Al sees it, how the officials on the field see it, um, and, and then coach our players um, accordingly, what the rules are um, one yard, um, more than one yard downfield. Um, some of those, those rubs can, can be interpreted um, as picks, and therefore they see it as offensive pass interference. So um, you know, I, I just don't know how much the success rate is. I think that in critical situations um, like the other day, you know, Frank had one on third and five. I was grabbing uh, T.Y.'s arm. Four minutes left in the game. It turned out to be you know, a, a good challenge. The Panthers had a lot of success putting pressure on the quarterback this year. Is that success more schematic or more individual win in battle? You know, they don't, they don't pressure much. I mean, I think that they, um, they're very sound. They're very um, fundamentally sound. They're sound in their scheme. It's not like they have guys that are, that are running free. And then they're making mistakes. Um, they're they're winning, you know. What I mean, Addison and Burns and Irvin, uh, Poe and, and everybody McCoy involved inside. Um, they're, they're rushing and they're winning. And so it's a huge challenge that they've hit the quarterback 50 times, sacked them 30. Bring, uh, bring back Grisou and Waves Darius. I mean, it's just twofold. You like what you see from Khalif, where he's going to get an extended look, and I guess the move for Grisou because of some questions at that position here uh, with a couple of days before the game? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. However many questions you hey, – they look sharp. <laughs> How many mustaches are You know Paul wouldn't wear one. He's no fun. I wasn't offered one. Oh, uh, the that's a re there's a reason why you weren't offered. The, the Raymond part of it first. Yeah. What, Again, there's a lot of things that happen with the roster each and every day. Uh, John and I try to communicate that um, not only with each other and what we think uh, that we have to do, uh, but then we also try to um, communicate it as soon as that happens uh, with the team. I always feel like being transparent with them. Um, certainly that's not something that's easy to do at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, those guys walk into the meeting room and say that we added a player um, and then in a corresponding move, uh, we have to release a player that you know, is, is a, you know, does everything right and does things that we ask him to do and you know, puts the team first. But unfortunately, we have to make decisions um, you know, when one guy comes onto the roster. So um, that, that's where we were uh, today, and that could change you know, tomorrow and, and as we head into the game. For the time being, at least give you something a little different, maybe a little bit more of a burst, as well as a guy that can do some things in the offense a little bit. We were just, you know, looking at trying to evaluate the guys that are out here every day, practicing and improving and getting better, uh, whether that's on our 53 man roster or our practice squad. And, um, you know, Khalif was one of those players. And, um, you know, he got an opportunity, he did some things well. And when you do that, you earn more opportunities. Yeah with the concussion protocol, but how's it been at this point uh, kind of projecting ahead? Um, there is no projections. It's He's in the percussion, concussion protocol, and um, whenever the, the doctors, our doctors, the independent doctors, our trainers um, ask him to, to go on to the next step, he goes on to the next step, and then you know I wait in here. There's, there's nothing that's more important in the health of our team. I've, I've told you that a million times. I tell our players that especially as it relates to the concussion protocol. Um, having played this game, having kids that play it, have a, have a son that does play it, I mean, it's something that we, are, we take very seriously. He Seven. returned and finished, right? So yeah. it's one of those things where the symptoms just kind of... They do. Um, I think that, um, you know, players um, probably are affected a little differently um, as, as it relates to all injuries. You know, there, there's... A lot of things that come up the next day. I've had it, and you're like, man, I don't know. Did somebody, 
you know, beat me up while I was sleeping. And all of a sudden, my shoulder hurts or my arm hurts. And then, you know, first thing on Monday, Ben came in and said, um, you know, I'm feeling this. And so immediately, um, those are the actions and the steps that we take. I know you said we're still in concussion protocol. Yep, well, yep. But, um, you know, we'll, he's, I think, moving through um, probably further along to where he can, um, he can practice. And then, and then what you do is when you feel like he's made it through a practice, then you see an independent doctor. And at that point in time, they have their um, impact testing or whatever they do um, to then ultimately try to release the player. But um, he, he's going to try to do some stuff today, and, which is exciting. I know you talked about Christian McCaffrey yesterday. Is there, is there someone that he reminds you of that you either coached or played against? Um, I, I mean, they really – you know, I tried to tell the team today, you know, they, they have the, the two best players um, at their position on their team. I mean, they have the best inside linebacker and they have the best, they have the best running back in the league. And uh, if you don't block 59, he's going to make the tackle on, on every play. I don't care if it's a run or a pass. And um, if, you, if you jump out of your gap against McCaffrey uh, or come under a block on the edge, he's going to find the hole. If you um, overrun him, he's going to cut back. If you stay high and soft. He's going to stiff arm you. Um, it's a great challenge um, for us. So I don't, wouldn't even want to try to compare him to, to any player um, coached or played or, you know, gone against. Is superior athleticism and superior preparation all combined into one? Yeah, he's, he's, he, he plays hard, um, very hard. He, he runs to the football. He's fast. Um, he's athletic. He's got great hands, and then he's very instinctive and very aware of what's going on. And if you've you know, put something on film that you know, you're going to try to slip by him, you know that's it's it's a tough challenge. He's good on third down as he is on first, isn't he? I mean, that's kind of been his past in the passing game too. Well, and even in the first and second down passing, I mean, you try to get him on play action. You know, he takes a step and he immediately. Um, recognizes the the routes. He's very tight in coverage. Um, Jimmy made a mistake last week. He tried to throw to the crossing route underneath and he undercut it. And you know he's got great hands. He rarely drops one. He dropped one against Jameis, uh, I think, in London, um, which was shocking. I mean, he he basically runs the routes for these guys. And um, you know, we have to be very careful uh, when we throw it in his direction. Logan had done a lot of good things, obviously, the last couple of years, but no picks. And then three picks in eight games this year. Is there anything tangible to that? Or is it just the way the ball bounces? Uh, you know, not having evaluated um, Logan and what he was doing before here. Um, you know, sometimes when you play, you know, a lot of match coverage or man coverage, again, if you're, as long as your man's not catching a ball, you may see the PBU numbers go up a little bit, uh, and start to play some more zone. And uh, then you have the ability to get your hand on the football. You know, he did a great job. You know, playing in a, in a deep part of the field for us, um, you know, twice really on the same type of play, you know, the seam and he came back and, and almost had the one, I guess, the ground, you know, thankfully uh, caused the ball to come out um, and then the one at the end of the game. So, you know, he's, he, he's doing you know, things how we, how we coach him and, and understanding how to fit and blitzing for us and stopping the run and, and doing a lot of good things for us. Dress Kyle on yesterday, but do you see him as a guy that can do some things that maybe Cam can't do? What are your overall impressions of him as a quarterback? Well, again, I, I'm not into really the comparisons between Cam and, and Kyle. I know that Kyle is going to be starting a game, um, and that's who we have to focus on. And, and if whoever comes in after that, then we'll have to to concentrate on that player. Um, it's a young player, I think, that has continued to improve and develop, um, given the opportunity. You know, I'm sure there were some throws he'd like to have back last week, but you know, it's, it's hard to play in that situation against a, any defense in this league when you're down and, and you have to throw the football. So I, th I think that the game plan that we're expecting is, is one that's you know, similar to the one in, in Houston and Jacksonville and not, not afraid to move the ball and take chances down the field, but also you know, where it's a competitive game and you're able to – you know, use Christian extensively, you know, use more Samuel Olsen underneath and, you know, occasionally take the, the shots down the field. Uh, 
But then last week when, it, when things kind of get out of hand in this league and you're forced to drop back and throw it on third and 12 a bunch down as much as they were, well, that's sometimes where the interceptions come up. But he's been very good with the football um, when he's thrown it. a guy who's recognizing things a little quicker these days? Well, we've talked it, you know, a few weeks about Rashawn and about his comfort level as it relates to seeing things, you know, again now in games for, you know, the third and fourth time as plays or situations or formations uh, come up that um, there is a level of, of, I think, patience to him. I think we always talk about, you know, making sure that you're not in a big hurry to go in the wrong direction, that you're patient, and then once you diagnose it and understand where you need to go, uh, going as fast as you can. You know, he's improved at that, and um, you know he's also, you know, his tackling is, is much improved. I think he's staying on his feet. He's taking good angles. He's wrapping. He's running his, running his feet on contact. through that sort of thing. When you get into this profession, is it kind of understood the work-life home balance isn't going to be very normal with the hours you've got to spend here? You know, I think that that's something that we all um, try to manage and do our best with and, you know, try to make up for a lot of things um, in the off season. Uh, try to get these guys out of here on, on Fridays um, so that there's some sort of day, um, you know, we had a lot of these coaches and players' kids come through for Halloween on, on Tuesday, which was fun. Um, Matt Edwards' his son one up you guys. He actually pulled out the whole uniform. He had the vest on. He had the glasses on. He had the mustache on. So, I'll uh, I'll get you a picture of that. But he 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 tore your guys' costumes to shreds, and, and so it's difficult. Oh, I didn't even see back there. That is perfect. They got the blue vest, the white shirt. A little less f bombs, and you'll be okay. A little more, maybe, but it is—it's not easy. And I would say that I've told this to people that if I would have gotten—I don't know if I would have gotten into coaching when Tyler and Carter were at the age they were when I was playing, which was 12 and 10. You know, when I was could coach baseball teams and basketball teams. You know, Tyler's fifth grade team in Kansas City. I would—I would leave meetings at 4.30 and I would fly right to the field and I was coaching uh, Tyler's fifth grade team and, you know, helping out with Carter's third grade team. And so I really don't know if I would have made that decision. But when I did get into coaching, they were, you know, getting into high school and, and I felt like it was a good fit for our family. And I, I know that every coach loves football. They love helping players. They love the everything about it, and they also, you know, love their families. But it does take a toll on that by not just being around. The best thing you can do for your kids and your family is, is time. It's not money. It's not gifts. It's just time, and um, that's one thing that's hard to give them uh, during the season. But I appreciate the question. Ron has weathered a few storms in Carolina. Is he a good example to learn from on a kind of crisis management? Well, he's a great resource. He's been a great um, – I guess mentor for me, um, as along with a few other guys. But every time I've always asked him about questions and asked him about scenarios and things and about this business, uh, he's been very open to to helping me and, and a lot of other coaches. He cares deeply about this game and what it's given him. Um, he cares about growing the game in, in the right way at uh, at the youth level. He's heavily involved and. In, and then improving uh, young coaches. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's been great just to be able to use him as a resource. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.